Hi all, how are you doing? I hope you're doing great wherever you are in the world. So, um, I did a video, Retic Finance, watch this before investing. Got a few comments, and one of the comments, which I see quite a bit, is how do I convince my co-workers to stop buying this crap? He won't listen, all right? Uh, so this might not be a co-worker, it might, might also be uh, a friend, you might be a wife, husband, uh, brother, you know, whatever. A friend of yours anyway and you, you're looking out for them you want to stop them losing the money basically because you care about them okay and uh, so there's sometimes it can be really difficult they've got a mindset on that they're going to invest in this and it's like you know they've got blinkers on kind of thing okay they're going to invest in this and they think if i put the money in this it's going to 100x or whatever so they've got the blinkers on and they don't care what you're going to say so sometimes you can't really do a lot but what I would advise you to do, well, some advice is, obviously you want to try, okay? You don't want to gonna give up on your friend, okay? Um, I mean, it may be that they're only investing a small amount, $100, but some might be going hardcore and going putting 10 grand into it or whatever. So you kind of don't want that. So what you can do is you could kind of lessen the blow and say, listen, okay, so you want to invest in this. Okay, fine, go with it. But why don't you lessen the load that you're putting into this? Okay, I've got reasonable doubt that this is a legitimate project. I know I'm not going to stop you, but rather than putting a £1,000 into it, why don't you just stick a £200 into it, see how it goes, and then invest more when it gets going, okay? And if it doesn't get going, you've only lost £200. So you could start with that. So you could sort of lessen the amount lessen the amount that they're putting into it, into the project, okay? Um, because at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people thought Bitcoin was a scam and some people still do. And some people will always think Bitcoin's a scam. So it, it's very difficult to sort of say to a person, no, you're wrong about this. Because at the end of the day, it's kind of your opinion. Um, uh, another thing I would do is get them to explain the project. What are they investing in? Can they explain it back to you? If they can't explain it back to them, back to you then clearly they don't know what they're talking about and they don't really know what they're getting invested in so that's something that you could do um now speaking about this this is retic so this is a specific coin so i was talking generalities about any kind of coin any kind of project that you want to get into that might be a lot of garbage because at the end of the day there's thousands i mean i have no idea how many cryptos there are now there's probably a hundred thousand because there's literally one being created every sort of 10 seconds so who knows there could be a million crypto tokens they can't all be brilliant okay they can't all be they can't all go to the moon right it's impossible there's not that enough money on the planet kind of thing okay so most of these tokens are gonna go to zero so you need to explain that to people that's the other thing so if we have a look at the Shiba Inu, uh, sorry, this article, it kind of compares SHIB to Retic. Now, this is where I'd sort of look at this. I mean, this is one of the things I kind of uh, pulled this up on. Uh, Retic is comparing itself to all the top 10 tokens. And to compare Retic to Shiba Inu seems crazy to me. Um, because one's a meme coin and one's, this one is supposedly to do with finance so they're completely uh you, you can't compare them all right um so it starts off first saying about shiba inu is going to go up 500 percent and isn't it great and all of that kind of thing and therefore and then they're going to say ah but actually retic's going to do even better than ship okay so they're comparing on a sort of financial uh view that retic's going to go up more than ship is all right but it's just terrible to compare the two, in my opinion. So that, to me, would be a red flag. So if I was your, I was a, a friend sort of saying about this retic, I'd be saying what all the red flags are. So all these articles on these these crummy sites, okay, sorry, NDTV, but you're not a massive site, in my opinion. You're just like an, art, an article site where people just put loads of articles and shill their projects and stuff, and you take some money for it. Um, other red flags such as the team okay so a lot of people in the comments have been saying well you know bitcoin doesn't have a team 
And the thing is, Bitcoin actually does have a team, believe it or not. They have a team of programmers that can come and go. It's decentralized, so other programmers could come in. But they generally have the same kind of few programmers that update Bitcoin every now and again. So Bitcoin, believe it or not, does have a team, okay? So a lot of these, and they, they do have names. With this Retic Finance, you don't have any names. Um, or, you know, any project that you're going to invest in, who are the team, okay? I, I think in 2024, we talk about all this decentralization and stuff. But to, to get a project going, I think you need a team to get it going. You can then potentially leave it, okay? It can it can then become decentralized after a while, okay? So, but but to begin with, I think you need a team to get things going, to get the ball rolling with these things. And who is the team? You don't know who they are. You know, they keep doing these uh, pre-sales and, and the token price keeps going up every sort of month. And it's like the next stage of this pre-sale, ramping up the the hype basically on it but why don't they do like an ama why don't why don't these people do an AMA, ama with somebody okay why don't they do a chat i'm sure there's plenty of youtubers who would do an ama without even you know getting charged for it because it can bring quite a lot of uh, traffic sometimes or just a bit of interest from people so it can it can bring people to the channel you don't have to you know, you, you can do them for, for free, to be honest with you, I'd say. I know a lot of the big YouTubers like to get paid, but you could easily do some small AMAs with people. Or even you can just do some videos, create your own channel and create your own kind of AMAs and have yourself on on um, on your own channel just creating a video with you in front of the camera as a CEO explaining your project to people rather than it just being in a PDF and being really bland you could have yourself, but they don't do that, <laughs> okay? Now, if they're trying to raise millions of pounds, or millions of dollars, should I say, uh, on, on these these projects, you'd surely create a video um, with programmers, CEOs, and stuff like that, and discuss things of, of, of how your project is going to make a difference in the world. So where is all of that? Because you could do that, and it wouldn't cost you anything. So... These are all the red flags that I would point out to these people. And at the end of the day, some people, you're just not going to change their mind. They're just, like I said, they've got the blinkers on and they're just going to invest in it anyway. So sometimes you just have to let people lose the money. All right. It's the only way to learn. And if they keep repeating the process, okay, then I, I don't know what to say. You know, if you keep repeating your mistakes, when are you going to learn? You know, you need to grow up basically. Um, <laughs> you know, I know, I know fortune favors a brave and all of that and people fail in business and they get back up and they, um, start again on some other new project and hopefully that succeeds. And if it doesn't, they start again. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. You know, that, that can happen in life, but you're better off, um, not doing that, not making the mistakes, okay? If you can avoid the mistakes, because there's clear red flags with these, this project, in my opinion. And there's so many other projects. Like I was saying before, there's probably 100,000 cryptos out there. I mean, you only have to look at um, CoinMarketCap. Let's have a look at CoinMarketCap. All right, let's have a look. Okay, so if we look at CoinMarketCap, it shows the top 100 tokens. OK. So here we've got Bitcoin. If I put them in order, 24 hours, you know, you could have invested in Pendle, Rose. You gain 12 percent in a day. Isn't that good enough for you? And this is like a solid. These are solid projects. Rose, Pendle. These are more solid. Why invest in some small, low cap crypto that you've barely even barely heard of? You don't know who the team is or anything. When you've got more solid projects, you know, this is the 92nd project out of like 20,000 kind of thing or 100,000. Yeah, and it's up 12%. If you'd have put your money in that, you'd have made 12% today. Rather than put your money into some nonsense coin that you've never heard of, you've no idea if you're going to get anything back. You don't know if it's a scam or anything. These are much more legitimate projects that you can still earn decent money from. So that is what I'd say to people. Um, 
why not invest in something more solid? And, and unless you're absolutely sure about something and you've done lots of lot and lots and lots of research, you know, do your own research. Um, because in my opinion, if you've done research into this erratic finance, you shouldn't be investing in it. It, it. It's a lot of it's a nonsense project, in my opinion. OK. Anyway, I hope I've um, helped you out there, Tyler, Tyler M. Um, I don't know if I'm going to convince your co-worker to not invest in this stuff, but um, uh, I try my best. <laughs> OK, thanks for listening anyway.